when I'm you wearing this jacket, I feel like I'm. My name should be Blaine, <laughs> or Blair. You're very distinguished ooh, ooh, ooh. in Ted. the eighties. Ted. Those are all like eighties. Like or like maybe I should be like wearing right? like smoking 80s. a pipe of some sort. Can you see that? Can we do that in editing? Like. Put me smoking a pipe. Oh, you know, that would be really cool right now if there's a way. Yes, here it is. Ted smoking. No, which one do you like, Blaine Blair, Ted? Um, if, if I'm in like, what is it, Sixteen Candles or Pretty in <laughs> Pink what or whatever it is, yeah. probably Blaine. Blaine. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, Blaine smoking a pipe right now. We'll be right back. <laughs> Coffee and Confessions. It is a new family Tuesday. Yeah. So welcome. Yeah, we've got a number yeah. of new ones that came Good in. Good to have you with us. I've got Al Kinsel and the Kinsel family kind of shouted us out. Man, love you guys. Miss y'all. Hope to see you guys um, soon in person, but I'm glad you're on the show with us, man. You can be here every day with us. That's awesome. And then we got a couple people that just kind of put some initials. So we have SMH. And we got M H, or it's S M dash slash H. S M H. We're just gonna call you slash. M H. You're slash now. Slash. That's right. And then M H was was there, man. We're glad. To, hey, if you're new and watching the show today, in the comments, would you go ahead and say, hey, it's me from, from over here, and I'm watching today, and that will, and maybe if you subscribed, because you should like, subscribe, and comment below. Yeah. So we, comment your name, where you're from. And you can also set a reminder on YouTube for the show that every day it'll remind you, send you a little thing to your thing, which is always cool. Little thing to your thing. Little thing. <laughs> to your, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, be careful here. This is a show for That's kids, right. too. Well, all, right. all right, so welcome <laughs> to Coffee and Conf Confessions, where we love to drink coffee. Yes, we do. Oh, we forgot to do it. We did. Yes. And we love to confess the word. We love to confess the word, man. This is our daily devotional. We're going to bring you a teaching from God's word right now. And then right at the now. end of the show, we're going to bring you a confession from that word. We mobilize the power of God's word when we speak it together. Right. Every day we do these confessions together at the end of the show. We have a lot of fun along the way. Super so fun. Let's do it. All right. So the verse word of the, day. of the day comes from John chapter 14, verse 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Yeah. And this kind of builds upon what we talked about yesterday, how it. the Holy Spirit helps us. And we don't want to live being dependent upon miracles. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, so many people, you know, this age that we live in, our culture is being defined by the word victim. Like, and I think some, some of us, we struggle with it. And, and some people struggle with that idea because they feel like in this, in our culture, we're really, we're struggling for a lot of things, attention. Mm -hmm. we, we think that we need to get sympathy and we feel like the help we, we need will come through those avenues doesn't work that way. No. Um, that's not what we need. Actually, we need something totally different. And, and that to me mm -hmm. kind of reminds me of, of sometimes us that, that I've even been there before where you're living for the miracle. You're living for the big thing that will happen that all of a sudden change everything in your life, the, 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 the weird, un unbelievable thing. And sometimes we're like, you know, we, you know, we'll shout it out on Facebook. Hey, everybody, I need you to pray for me right now. And maybe there's a time to do that. But then sometimes it's not okay to just always do that, you know, or call me you call it pastor. You pray for me. This person pray for me. This person, you know, God's got a better way of doing things. And he wants you to learn how to stand in the power of his word. And I recently, just this last week at Living Word, Gilbert preached a message and it was called standing in God's power. And the idea is to have your roots ground so deep down into God's word you see the fruit of that every day of your life. You know how to activate it. You know how to use it. And then because of that, you don't have to live in victim mode. You don't got to wait for the miracle to happen. I, I mean, how many miracles have you maybe had in your life? You know, do you think like straight miracles? Straight. I mean, a good handful. A good handful. You know, but they, they vary depending on what and you... time frames maybe like spread out what, you know? what you personally classify as a miracle i mean there's been a few i mean other than finding me marrying me <laughs> that was a blessing of course <laughs> oh, that was not a miracle yeah. all right um you know there's been a, a small handful of the big what we would look at and say oh that's a miracle mm -hmm. um 
little ones. So it depends on what you call a miracle, but it's really not about the miracles. It's not. And I was just thinking as you were talking, um, that's a lot of times what we do at, um, just really, I think at church, mm -hmm. a lot of times um, in our relationship with God, yeah. we're looking for the firework. Well, we're yeah. looking for that magic big moment, experience. that big, yeah. And we get it sometimes, you know, That's whether good. you go That's to a good. conference or, you know, God's really doing something on you and in you. And, and it's just, you know, you have that moment, but those moments are so few and far between as well. They are. It's, we're and there's not, nothing wrong with those moments, but it's just, it's not what to live for. Those moments are a blessing. Those moments are fantastic. Those moments can help really carry us through. They can help propel us um, forward, but it's not what it's about. Yeah, it's really yeah. not what it's about. And sometimes we get focused on finding those. And it's just yeah. like when you're talking about, we focused on the miracles, focused on that. Sometimes we get focused on like those big moments. And we think if we don't, we're not feeling those big moments, mm -hmm. if we're not experiencing those big moments all the time, if we're not experiencing miracles all the time, something's wrong. Yeah, But it's not actually wrong. That's it's a healthy relationship. You know, yeah. we can't go on a date night and have a super, you know, honeymoon type experience every single day. You know, there's life to live. There's yeah. don't, there's life to live. There's, I, you're thinking something. <laughs> no, but there's life to live and there's that real relationship there that we, we need to learn how because though that real relationship is, is really the longevity of the relationship. Yeah. And you think about it, the, the idea of, what's happening in the background, in the quiet place. You know, your relationship with God's built in you and that those times with God where he's just being, you think about really most of the time that the stories of the Bible talk about God talking to someone else. Usually they were somewhere alone. And I feel like that has a lot to do with the noise of life. Mm -hmm. Usually it's not, you know, Mary was alone. I think of Moses and Abraham and I think of all that Jesus, you know, God was using and speaking to him, training him out in the wilderness where he was out there alone. And we have to train in God's word. We don't try yeah. to follow Jesus. We train to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's a big idea this week on the show. And so what that means is that we've, we've got to, you don't see though what's happening because of the quiet place a lot of times. You, you, it, what's happening oh, with the good. study of the word of God is happening kind of in the background. Mm -hmm. Things are building. And you, you, know, you, you think about it, um, you know, actually I was, I was recently at Living, um, my brother and I, Pastor Mark from Living Where Scottsdale, we traded um, places. And uh, so I taught in Scottsdale and he taught in Gilbert. And he told me um, that he saw, it was actually uh, one of, it was Pastor Josh Garner who's at our church. It was his son, Nathan. And we've known Nathan since he was born, but he said, here he is. And he was just worshiping God, like kind of intently. And he brought it up to me to say, that's been happening in the background this whole time. Like, you don't understand what's going on. You, when you're around the word of God, you see, you hear, you, it's, there's things happening that you, yeah, it might not be visible at first. Mm. You know, when you're pregnant, <laughs> I've never been pregnant, <laughs> but I've heard that you yes. don't know right away. I mean, you don't know in right. the moment. Right. Um, however, over time, you start to see and then so when you're pregnant with that uh, there's not a lot of evidence of it at first but then over time there becomes more and more evidence until finally everybody's saying when are you gonna have that baby right mm -hmm. like, you think needs to get out of you it's ready and that's what happens man with the word things are on the inside happening you've been believing you've been speaking you've been going to church you've been hearing the word you've been been growing and thriving in that things are happening in a place that's hidden mm -hmm. but it's soon to be seen for everybody that's right. And think you're going to see the fruit. Think of a seed. When you yeah. plant a seed, you know, it, it reminds me yeah, of, the of our, our beet story, yeah. um, which I think we've told before on this show. But uh, um, so so you plant the seed and like a beet is a root, right? Yeah. So so the, the main fruit is what's going on underneath the mm -hmm. ground. And as the, the root, the actual beet started to grow well before any of the greens even did. Yeah, but I didn't know that. So, so that when you plant a plant, the root starts going before you ever see anything, before yeah, so the smallest it evidence of it. There was evidence. There's already roots down in But there. I thought I messed it up. I thought I planted everything too close because I saw the greens on the top, but I didn't see the beets. We planted these beets in our garden. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so I come to you and I'm like, you know what? I did it wrong. I think I'm going to tear all this up after like a month and a half, maybe six weeks. And I'm like, let's just tear it out. I'll redo it. Mm -hmm. You're like, just leave it alone. Yeah. 
<laughs> just yeah, of she tells me this often. Just leave it alone, <laughs> and and uh, you know, just let it lie, and it'll be fine. You just wait. No, ah, I'll just do it. So I go up and I dig it up, and guess what happened? There were beets under there, and it would have been fine if they just would have continued to develop. Maybe eventually I would have seen it in a place to the naked eye. However, I, I pull it up too quick, you know, yeah. and that's because I was impatient. And so, mm -hmm. but when you're standing in God's power, you're not worried about, man, I need the miracle again. I'm going down. Everybody pray for me in the world. And we're posting and we're saying, oh, help me. And I'm living in this victim mentality and everything. And man, that's one of the worst places that we could be. We need to go to the word, understand the word, let your mind be renewed by the word. You know, your spirit's saved but your mind and your body are not. Yeah. <laughs> so they have to be renewed. They have to come into alignment with what, with what God's word says. And that takes a little bit of time before that happens. Okay. But the more we operate in it, love it, uh, understand it, meditate in it, and especially we speak it. Mm -hmm. When we speak the word of God, things start to happen. I find when you speak it, it gets down into you even more. That's right. It goes deeper when you speak that out loud, amen. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit's the part of that that teaches us. He's, he's your friend. So if you're intimidated by the word, that is why the, t the church is there. That is why we teach the word. We have at our church all sorts of Bible studies, men's, women's. We have different groups and things throughout the week that we're a part of. We have also every Sunday, the main thing. <laughs> come on in and you get to hear the word. And uh, that's the best part. But yes. let's, you want to confess the word right now? Sure. We're going to confess the word with you right now. And let's see the victory come to your life by the spoken word. Let's grow roots down deep into the word of God. Ready? The word of God is growing roots deep down into the fiber of who I am. Speak this because sometimes you need to say it because it is reality. The word of God is growing roots deep down into the fiber of who I am. Praise the Lord. My mind and spirit is full of the thoughts, plans, and ideas of God's word. I have the mind of Christ. Say this with confidence. My, My mind, mind and spirit is full of the thoughts, plans, and ideas of God's word. I have the mind of Christ. Christ. Praise God. Let's go. Let's go. You. Man, we want you to like, subscribe, and comment below. We'd love to see you um, this upcoming weekend. Plan on being at church. Yeah. It's the best place that you can be and one of the best things you yeah. can do for your family and remember, every week. The 12 week church challenge is Ooh, still going on. Right. So um, if you're in the uh, East Valley, we'd love to have you at Living Word Gilbert, but wherever you are around the nation, we encourage you to get into church this Sunday. No doubt. If you're new, shout out below. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow.